I'm going to show you guys a super tricky opening trap that is extremely effective among low rated players, but I've even seen players up to 2000 rated fall for it. So make sure you pay attention. This is a good one. What's going on guys? National Master Nelson Lopez and today I'm going to show you the Blackburn shilling trap. Let's go. So this is a trap that you play as black against e4. You play e5, knight f3, knight c6. And if your opponent plays bishop to c4, now you can play this trap. Now, bishop c4 is the second most common move that they'll play. The most common move is actually bishop to b5. I also have a video on four traps you can play against this, which is the Rui Lopez. I'll link it above and in the description below if you want to check that out. But like I said, second most common move is this, so you will definitely see it a lot and get a lot of opportunities to play this. So what you do is play knight to d4, and this is where you set the trap. Now, your opponent will probably notice that you left this pawn undefended and free for the taking. And not only that, you've also set them up for a nice little fork on your queen and rook. But that's exactly what you wanted, and they've already fallen for your trap. So now you play queen to g5, and you're threatening two things at once. The undefended g2 pawn and the knight on e5. If white decides to defend the g2 pawn, maybe with rook g1 or even castles, you simply capture their knight on e5 and you just won yourself a knight. So most likely they'll try to save their knight and capture on f7, forking your queen and your rook. Now you're going to play queen takes g2 and you're threatening their rook on h1. Now there's two moves that your opponent could play. The first one is they could capture your rook in the corner with their knight. But if they do that, you're going to capture their rook with your queen. Check. They can't move up because your knight's got the square covered. So the only legal move is to block with the bishop. Then you're going to capture on e4. Check again. Now, if they block with the queen, you simply capture it with your knight, and you should be able to easily win from there as you're up a queen. The only other move that they can do is bishop to e2, and now you play the killer move, d5. The idea is you're letting out this bishop, and you're setting up a checkmate in two moves. And white actually has no moves that can save the position for him. If you notice, this bishop is pinned, so it can't move. The queen is trapped, can't do anything. The bishop can't do anything. The rook can't do anything. The only move that your opponent could try to play is something like d3 to attack your queen but you simply play knight to f3 check. Also takes away this square. Remember the bishop is pinned so he can't capture you. Has to move his king over and then the point of d5 was to let out this bishop for checkmate. All right, so I've hopped back to this position. If you remember last time, white decided to capture the rook and then we captured his rook and he got into all kinds of trouble. The other option is for white to play rook to f1 trying to save his rook that way. But now you have queen takes e4 check. Again, if white tries to block with the queen, you simply take it with your knight and win the queen. The only other way to block the check is bishop to e2. And now you have the beautiful smothered checkmate, knight to f3. The bishop cannot capture you because it's pinned to the king, and it is game over. So if you're rated anywhere under 1600, I highly recommend you give this trap a try. I think you're going to get a lot of really cool wins. Let me know in the comments below if you were able to pull it off. I'd love to hear about that. If you learned something from this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching and take care.